Hi everyone, my name is Catherine. I'm one of the reference librarians at the Haverford Township Free Library, and this is Reading with Reference. I've got a couple more book recommendations I'd like to share with you. So my first book is Sabrina and Corina by Kelly Fajardo Anstein. It's a short story collection that was on the long list for the National Book Award last year. I'm generally not a big fan of short stories. I have a hard time staying interested when the narratives keep changing, um, but this one was so well written and compelling that it's made me change my mind. The author writes about the lives of indigenous Latina women, mostly in Southern Colorado, which isn't a subject I've really ever thought about or read about before. Each story is its own little world. The characters feel so real and well-developed, and even when their stories are heartbreaking or infuriating, I kept wanting to spend time with them. Uh, the stories also somehow all felt like the perfect length. They weren't too short or too long, even if I did want to read a full-length novel about each of them. The audiobook for this is also really great because it's narrated by a full cast, so every story feels really distinct, not like it's just um, an extension of the same story with the names and details changed. Um, I also just finished reading Tommy Orange's There There, which is a really wonderful book of linked short stories about Native experiences in the Western U.S., and which we'll also be discussing at our virtual meeting of Books on Tap this coming Tuesday if you'd like to join us. Um, so if you liked that one, uh, definitely check out Sabrina and Corina. Um, my second book today is Una Out of Order by Margarita Montemore. Uh, it's a time travel novel, but probably not in the way that you're expecting. So on New Year's Eve 1982, 18-year-old Una Lockhart is at a party with her boyfriend, her best friend, and her band, trying to decide what she wants to do with her future. Uh, go to London and study economics or take a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go on tour with her band. But then the clock strikes midnight and she wakes up in a house she's never seen before in her own body, but it's her body at 51 years old. There's also a young man named Kenzie waiting there who she's never seen before, but who tells a very freaked out Una that it is 2015. He gives her a letter that he says was written by a 2014 version of herself, explaining that she doesn't experience time linearly, but in a series of leaps. While her mind might move in a straightforward line, it will be in a different physical version of her body at the start of every new year. And her older selves have made a no spoilers rule, so Una must figure out both the future she's found herself in every year and what it is she wants from her life in each present that she finds herself in. The book follows Una as she moves back and forth through time from the club scene in the 1990s in New York City to trying to find meaning in a life that doesn't look anything like she's expected. I read this right at the beginning of my quarantine and it was such a wonderful escape. Um, it's a really unusual creative story that's easy to lose yourself in, which I think we all need right now. If you liked The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger, you'll love this book. It's funny and bittersweet and a little romantic all at the same time, and I really loved it. Thanks so much for watching and take care.